Hi folks, welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. From the postmillennial.com. Give a heads up. Postmillennial is getting threatened by the progressives and the left progressive wing of the media. Legacy media, whatever you want to call them, there's a lot of names. They do real reporting, tell the truth. They're going after their advertisers to try to destroy them. Libby Emmons is on here. I see her a lot on Timcast IRL. She's a good egg. She's a good reporter. She wrote this story. And you're going to see a couple of videos, one video I'm going to comment on. So if you can, anything you can do for the post-millennial, give them your traffic. Maybe support their advertisers. I'd appreciate it. Breaking Judge Slams Prosecutor for trying to use Rittenhouse's right to remain silent against him. A huge no-no. You are already, I was astonished when you began your examination by focusing on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40, 50 years, the judge said. And we won't go into the whole thing here, but it's, it's really amazing to me. Absolutely astounding. The prosecutor tried to bring up Rittenhouse's invoking his right to remain silent after his arrest, which is long established in U.S. law to be permissible to hold against a defendant. Now, we're going to show a little clip here, and then I'm going to show a clip. Let's, uh, let's listen. You need to account for this. Your Honor, I don't want to... He's commenting on my client's right to remain silent. You know, Your Honor, I am making the point that after hearing everything in the case, now he's tailoring his story to what has already been introduced. That's the problem is, this is a grave constitutional violation for you to talk about the defendant's silence. And that is, and, and, the, and you're right. You're right on the you're right on the borderline, and you may you may be over, but uh, it better stop. Understood. This is I can't think of the case the initial case on it, but it's uh, this is not permitted. Now, I'm going to show you another clip. This was goes on after this. Defense issued an objection, saying that the state was trying to comment on my client's right to remain silent. And that's exactly what he was doing. Unbelievable. I wasn't using deadly force to protect the property. I was using deadly force to protect myself. And you can read the rest of the story here, but I think the video I'm going to show is... Uh, uh, yeah, let's, let's just watch this. This is, this is fascinating. Why would you think that that... Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury. You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination. Yeah, we went through that, but it's just amazing to me. Uh, it goes along with my theme. My theme is, is this guy, is, when I say this guy, I mean the prosecutor, uh, the assistant district attorney, is he trying to throw this case? Now, the defense might ask for a mistrial with prejudice. And from what I found out, I just thought that meant a mistrial, you had to do the trial over again. A mistrial with prejudice, which now the judge can use at any time, even after a jury verdict. A mistrial with prejudice means all charges are thrown out forever it cannot be retried it would be double jeopardy that's where the with prejudice comes in is this guy purposely trying to cause a mistrial with prejudice to save his own ass from the mob as we've seen and this is supposedly now i can't confirm it there's a video going around with george floyd's nephew saying that we should start intimidating the jurors these white supremacists, white supremacists, what the hell are you talking about? 
The two people, the three people that got shot, two of them died. And the person that did the shooting were all white. I, I, these people are nuts. Why isn't this person in jail just for threatening jurors? Whatever happened to that? Threatening jurors in the old mafia days was a huge deal. And hundreds of organized crime members have been in jail over the decades for jury tampering. But yet nothing happened. In the Shodan trial and this one, now they have they found people in, in the spectators, in the audience there at the trial, this trial, taking photographs, taking photographs of jurors as they're outside getting on buses to go home at night because they're not sequestered. This is what they do. This is what they do in authoritarian countries. Anyway, so let's, uh, I'm going to show a, a, a clip here and make some comments on it. And it's really astounding to me. I think that the prosecutor is trying to throw the case. Hopefully it will get thrown out by mistrial with prejudice. Meaning, see, we never even got a chance for the jury to make a decision. I don't think he wants a jury decision. I really and truly don't. So uh, let's see this video and I'll make a couple of comments and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Now we're going to see some clips here. This is basically the aftermath and some other things that the prosecutor is trying to put in that the judge and the defense objected to. The judge made some motions, kind of complicated legal stuff. But I want to give you an idea of the atmosphere and what this, I consider this guy here, here's a prosecutor in the gray suit in the center. This guy's a weasel. Now, I think what's going on is he's been getting away with all kinds of crap, unlawful and unethical for a long time. And maybe he finally got a judge going to call him on his nonsense. And I think that's exactly what's going on. So let's, uh, let's see what, <laughs> this is amazing. Now, I have edited, I have to say up front, because you can't show 11-minute video here and nobody would watch it. But I think it'll give you an idea of the tension and the atmosphere in the courtroom today. Getting the court's rulings or attempting to provoke a mistrial in this matter. He knows he can't go into this and he's asking the questions. I asked the court to strongly admonish him and the next time it happens, I'll be asking for a mistrial with prejudice. Now, a mistrial with prejudice means all charges are dropped forever. You cannot try the person again. Unlike a normal mistrial where you schedule another trial in the future, with prejudice means the case is over. And I think this, this weasel of a prosecutor is trying to do this, have a mistrial with prejudice, so he's off the hook for being incompetent. Or be honest with you, this case never should have been brought to trial. The only thing that's even close to being unlawful is the fact that Rittenhouse was under 18. He did not transport a gun across state lines. And the uh, mainstream media says that's a lie. It's also a lie. The one guy he shot and ended up dying when he was defending himself, had his hands up when he shot him. That's a lie. And that's been perpetuated in the mainstream media for the last two days. This guy has no case. But if he didn't bring it to trial... He would have got all kinds of pressure from the progressive woke pains in the ass. Who's really, what will happen to the rule of law? You know that the scale of justice on top of the courthouse has a blindfold on. Now there's no guarantee you'll get justice in court, but it's the best chance that you have. And that's the way it's supposed to work. The law, the law is the law. You can't. Put your ideology and twist law. Even John Adams, American Revolution patriot, a future president of the United States at the time, defended British soldiers from the so-called Boston Massacre because it wasn't. It was propaganda done by the rebels. So propaganda has been done to push your side of the ideology since t time began. Let's listen. He's an experienced attorney, and he knows better. Mr. Finger? 
First of all, Your Honor, this was the subject of a motion. I'm well aware of that. And the court left the door open. This for me, not for you. My understanding of you your... You should have come and asked for, uh, for reconsideration. You did on the one motion, and in fact, I granted your motion for... Uh, I said I denied it, or I indicated a bias towards denial is what I did. Held it open with a bias towards denial. Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury? You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. And it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. He doesn't want to say mistrial with prejudice. He doesn't want to say it on the record as the judge. He knows better. This guy's a weasel. Or he's been using, I will call it, immoral tactics for a long time in court and finally he's calling him on it. I'm not sure. I don't know the history of this prosecutor. It's amazing to me. He wants to throw the case. It's unwinnable for him. But he had to charge Rittenhouse. He had to because of the public pressure. He'd probably lose his job in the end. So he's going through all this to cover his ass. Now he's going to throw the case? This is exactly what it looks like. The judge does not want to mistrial on prejudice. He wants the jury to come to a verdict. But this prosecutor is making it impossible for him. Let's listen on. So I don't know what you're up to. May I respond? Yes. We filed another acts motion on this exact issue because in my mind, and I argue, he was using it in a manner to try and protect property. No, he wasn't. There's, Your Honor, I, with all due respect. I'm not going to rehash the motion. That's absolutely untrue. It and is there's, no, no, no. Your arguments of record, my comments are of record, and why I ruled as I did is of record. There's nothing that I heard in this trial to suggest that anything's changed. Even if you're correct in your assumption that you know more than uh, I did at the time, uh, you should have come to the court and say, I want to go into this. Uh, why you would think that you could go into it without any advance notice to the court, I don't understand that. And as the uh, defense is pointing out, you're an experienced trial lawyer, and this should not have been gone into. It you goes. Have the gun with him. Your Honor, he is saying he wished he did so he could shoot people. You know, there's a lot of difference between commenting about something when you haven't got a gun and threatening someone when you do. You know, it's interesting, Your Honor, because the entire defense theory in this case is Joseph Rosenbaum, who was unarmed. I want you to tell me what the defense theory of the case is. I want... May I, look, res may I respond look. to what you just said, Your Honor? I'd like to respond to what you Can just you said. Down, I, I apologize, Madam Court Reporter, but I'd like to try and make... I mean, you know, it takes a special skill to piss everybody off. He's got the people that are on his side that want to hang this kid because of their political ideology and their nonsense. All the Rittenhouse people that are on his side are pissed at him. The judge is pissed at him. The defense attorneys are pissed at him. And now the court stenographer is pissed at him. It takes a special kind of skill to make everybody mad. You idiot. The record without anyone interrupting me, if that's okay. Yeah. Well, I'll anybody rub to me if that's okay. He's talking to the judge like that. What the hell's wrong with this guy? He's arrogant. Arrogant. This is what these progressives are like. They're arrogant. I believe that there is a central part of this case that Mr. Rosenbaum is making threats that he has no ability to carry out. So, to your point, Your Honor, you're arguing that this August 10th incident, one, one aspect of why you don't believe it's relevant is the defendant didn't have the gun with him. Forbearance to do that. I apologize, Your Honor. You're right. I probably should have brought this to your attention earlier. Yeah, he wouldn't even admit, I should have brought it to your attention earlier. I probably should have. His arrogance still seeps through. 
I may have misunderstood your ruling because I look at it. Look at the two defense lawyers. I may have understood your ruling and they're both like, really? You're an experienced prosecutor, trial lawyer. You did not misunderstand anything. You've been getting away with this crap probably in other trials. And now you got a real judge. Look at them. They're both like, it, it's comical to watch the reaction of the defense attorneys, but it's, it's spot on. Thought your ruling was if the evidence in this case made that more relevant, you would admit it or at least consider it an admittance. I believe, based on the evidence that we've heard, and more specifically, exactly what the defendant said earlier about admitting pointing a gun at someone who was merely jumping or sitting on a car, that the door is open now to this testimony. And I continue to believe that his state of mind, his intent, his belief as to self-defense is the core of this case. What's the, the court has seen no reason to change its ruling. And just so this record is clear, in spite of the lengthy statement by Mr. Binger, before we started today, the court specifically stated in Mr. Binger's presence, there's been nothing to have me change any of my rulings. There have been numerous occasions during this trial where they've opened the door. The one time when they're going into Mr. Rosenbaum's prior the reason he doesn't like guns, and I said something, I whispered in Mr. Krause's ear, it's because of the prior convictions. Please stop. And he did. He knows if you're going to go into something that's been excluded in a pretrial order, you better ask the court, you better get permission. This is ridiculous. Now, here's the other thing. These leftist progressive a-holes think the rules don't apply to them because they have a righteous cause. He went there to hunt people and kill them. What a crock of crap. He's just a young kid. He was 17 at the time. And he defended himself. And rightfully so. They threatened him verbally. They chased him down. Shots were fired. Is it tragic? Yeah. But if you look at the people that got shot, the two of them that died, their history is not so hot anyway, but they deserve to die, no. But they put themselves in that position because they, like this prosecutor, those protesters, actually the rioters and anarchists, are burning things down, smashing hundreds of cars and car lots, and somehow you have to be sympathetic towards them when they come after somebody that exercising their Second Amendment rights to defend themselves. So the rules don't apply to them because they're righteous. Bull. You know, it was trial. And by the way, Mr. Richards absolutely correctly points out that just hours ago, I said I had heard nothing in this trial to change any of my rulings. That was before so the why? Testimony, Your Honor. Pardon me. That was before the Don't get testimony. brazen with me. Uh, uh, you knew very well. See, I think he's pissing off the judge on purpose. He knows better. I'm sure he knows his judge. I mean, these guys all know each other. I live in upstate New York in Broome County. I know the prosecutors, the ADAs, a lot of lawyers, a lot of judges, they all know each other. They have a job to do, and they do it the best they can. Doesn't mean they're, they're good buddies and they're going to throw cases. They all know each other. So this guy knows. He's pushing the buttons for this judge on purpose. He's trying to claim probably prejudice against the judge in the end. That's what some of the media is saying now. Because the judge's cell phone went off and the, and the music that's playing in his cell phone is proud to be an American. All of a sudden, that makes him unfit to be a judge. This is nuts. You know very well that an attorney can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled without asking outside the presence of the jury to do so. So don't give me that. That's number one. Whether premeditated murder or whether self-defense, that's for the jury to decide. But I don't see the similarity. I said it couldn't come in, and it isn't coming in. No matter what you think. Number two, I, I have to be concerned that with what Mr. Richards has said about the, the, the progress of the trial, and... and um, yeah, the progress of the trial. What he's talking about is mistrial with prejudice. 
which means Rittenhouse walks away from everything and cannot be tried again. He doesn't want to say the words, and I don't blame him. I wouldn't either. When, when you were way, well, I said you were over the line, in, uh, close to or o over the line on commenting on the defendant's pretrial silence, which is a well-known rule. I, 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 I'm astonished that that would have been an issue. So I don't want to have another issue as long as this case continues. Is that clear? Now, isn't that amazing? I don't want this issue to come up again. Yes, Your Honor. And he'll do it again. Or something similar. Because he thinks the rules don't apply to him. And that's the way these people think. They always have. This gentleman on the left, by the way, was the one, the famous picture where he's got his hand planted on his forehead. When the prosecution's witnesses were going against the prosecution... He didn't, he didn't do his interviews properly. He didn't go over the testimony with his own witnesses properly. And they contradicted everything the prosecution said. One guy put it, the guy on the left there must be his assistant ADA, but hand, hand planted on his forehead. If this guy is arrogant and incompetent, or he's smart like a fox, he is a sleazeball, but he's smart like a fox. And he wants a mistrial with prejudice, so he saves his ass. Anyway, folks, I thought this was worth looking at. It's a longer video, I'm sorry. But I think it's important. It's important to see what's going on and how this progressive leftist ideology is so twisted and distorted. It is now filtered down in every institution in this country has made people stop believing in institutions. And we all know what happens when that happens. And until next time, goodbye and good luck.